On today's Locked On Bucks, the All Star game has passed. Damian Lillard with a breakout performance over the weekend. So, what better time than now to revisit that trade that brought Damian Lillard to Milwaukee? Check in on Drew Holiday, see the progress of both these teams and these players, and get into a lot of the questions that hang over that deal. Camille and I get into that after this on Locked On Bucks. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Bucks. I am Justin Garcia. You can hear me on the Bucks Radio Network. Joined as always by Camille Davis, who you can also hear on the Technical Foul podcast, as well as the Carry the G in MKE podcast. And we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen each and every day. Still free and available wherever you get your podcasts and viewable on YouTube as well. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's Locked On Bucks is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Camille, we mentioned we were going to get into this conversation uh, a couple of days ago, and it really helped us out with Damian Lillard putting together the performance that he had over the weekend. But uh, just taking a look back at this trade, we'll get into all angles of it, but um, not as if any Bucks fans need to be reminded, but the deal over the almost said summer fall uh, that brought Damian Lillard to the Bucks, sent Drew Holiday a 2029 unprotected first-round pick and two first-round pick swaps to the Trailblazers. You also lost Grayson Allen in part of that three-team deal. You get Damian Lillard, and you get what could prove to be a very important piece in that uh, 2024 second-round draft pick, which for all intents and purposes is going to be a fake first-round draft pick right. with where the Blazers are in the standings. That's the particulars of the deal. Um, we've heard more and more NBA voices start to get into this in the last couple of weeks. So uh, I suppose it's unfair to start off with the question first before we lay out our cases. But knowing everything that we know now, that you make this trade and you you knew you had no control over what happened with Drew, but knowing he ends up in Boston, do the Bucks still make this trade knowing that? I think that they do. Because when you think about why they took the chance to make this trade, like we have to think about what was happening in the fall during that time period, right? We knew the trade uh, demands were made by Damian Lillard. He wanted to get out of Portland, um, just felt like his timeline of looking to win a championship did not align with the franchise's timeline of what they were trying to accomplish based on how they were constructing their roster. So he wanted a different opportunity. Portland would say, okay, we'll try to find it. Um, and all you kept hearing about was Miami. Like, okay, Dame wants to go to Miami. That's probably going to be what happens. Meanwhile, here in Milwaukee, uh, Mike Boonholzer is fired after the Bucks flame out in the first round against the Miami Heat um, in a playoff series where the franchise and the players caught a lot of flack. Just like, how do you be the ones, you know, how are you bounced out by an 8C Miami Heat team? Now we see this Heat team continue to go further. Um, so people might look back differently on how that matchup looks. But I mean, it's still an 8C knocking out the one seed. And you see how it was done. They could not stop Jimmy Butler. It did not matter if Drew Holiday was defending him. It didn't matter what the Bucs were throwing at him. Jimmy Butler was in his Michael Jordan bag, and he could not be stopped. So Bucks get out early. They have a lot of time to think. Bud's gone. Now we're sitting here figuring things out. At the time, we have to also remember that Giannis was eligible for a contract extension. But at the time, it was like, hey, Feels unlikely that that happens. Like it makes more financial sense for him to wait is what you kept hearing. You kept hearing this. So, okay. And then all of the information was coming out from Giannis saying like, hey, I want to make sure I'm in a winning situation. I want to win. I need everyone around me to show the same dedication to winning that I have. Some people took that as signs. Like there's more smoke than normal around Giannis, but uh, Bucks fans who have been listening for years were like, this is in the lines of what Giannis has always said. He's always had a uh, a pulse on the franchise in that way of saying like, hey, as long as winning's number one thing, like I don't mind being here. So all that's on the table. Next thing you know, the Bucks trade for Damian Lillard because an opportunity presented itself for it to happen. 
And Horace was like, if you have the opportunity to pair one top 75 NBA player with another one, like you have to go and you have to do that. Um, and when you look at what Dame brings to the team, it's offense, right? It's Dame time. We've seen the clutch buckets. We know the resume at this point. And you think about pairing that type of point guard with a dominant force that is Giannis. And it's easy to say, like, this should be a very, very clean fit. Want to go forward with this. So it all makes sense. And now that we have a sample size of the season, even with Damian Lillard not shooting as well um, as one may have hoped at this point or being a little bit uh, more inconsistent, you still, in my opinion, would make this trade because of the offensive weight uh, that he brings and the gravity that he creates on the court. Like Giannis is having a career year, truly his best, arguably his best season of his career playing alongside Damian Lillard now. And he signed that extension to stay with the franchise. So there's no more concerns at this point about, is he going to resign? Is he not going to resign? After that Damian Lillard trade and him talking to his brother and figuring things out, he put that ink to the paper sign that extension. And I think that the Damian Lillard trade had a part to do with that because the franchise show, like we are serious about trying to make moves to improve this team. So uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll just put it out there first and foremost. I agree with you. I'm in the, the same thought of, yes, I do think even if the Bucks knew, and, and to be clear, the Bucks knew Drew Holiday was going to a contender, right? They didn't know he was going to Boston. They certainly knew that was a possibility, you hoped it would be somebody like the Clippers or or a team in the Western Conference, but you knew it was a possibility that he would go to Boston. So I, I do think you do have to keep that in mind with all of the, and I'm sure we'll hear more of it this week too, but every time it comes up of, man, knowing what they know now, do you think the Bucks make this trade? When you make that type of a deal, I think you do have to assume worst case scenario is going to happen. But when you look back at, at the Bucks' offense in the postseason, and, and we touched on this earlier in the year, Camille, this trade, sure, it was Damian Lillard for uh, Drew Holiday, but it was essentially saying we need to become an offensive team, that we've had an elite defense. It won us a title one year. We were a competitive team five years, and we feel like we should have more than one championship. Every, everybody is going to point to – uh, that season two years ago where you lost Chris Middleton when you were defending the title. Maybe you win the championship if you're healthy. You took the Celtics to a seven games. That was the year, by the way, the half-court offense was the most problematic. Now, you didn't have uh, Chris Middleton for most of the playoffs. You played the best defense in basketball for one of those series in seven games. But that year, the Bucks half-court offense was, was rated 18th out of 18 teams in the postseason. There were the Bucs. So um, that's one thing to examine. But year by year, you had a very good offense. And we saw those offensive numbers start to, to decline a little bit the last couple of years. Your defense remained elite. But when you fast forward to the postseason, half-court offensive efficiency in the five years under Mike Budenholzer, the Bucks ranks were 7th, 8th, 10th, 18th, as we just went through, um, and then eighth last year. Now, on the surface, it's well, for the most part, those are you know top 10, and it's an average of 10th best half court offense every single year. And again, keep in mind 16 teams make the playoffs and 20 teams make the postseason. So it's not a great spot to be in for the Bucs. And that was the big gamble of look. We've seen our offense not good enough. Our defense has been elite, and it worked one year. The others, we came up with issues through the postseason. So we need some half-court shot creation. Chris Middleton has basically been the guy as the only guy that can, that can give us that. I don't necessarily think it was even a gamble or, or a, a hedge on Chris's health so much as it was, let's just get more options in the half-court. You knew what it was going to do to your defense and as we'll get into a little bit later in this week, what you're seeing now in these last two or three weeks is what I think all of us envision the defense best case scenario, what they would look like. It's finally starting to get there. The offense has coincidentally taken a step backward in that. So long story short for me, I'm in total agreement with you. It's painful to see Drew Holiday end up in the best possible situation, but we will examine how Drew has played so far this season. But I think knowing what we know, what you gave up, uh, what it means for your future, what it did for the Boston Celtics, and even looking at some of the statistics for Damian Lillard so far, 
which may not be what you anticipated, but we'll get into that a little bit more in the next segment as well. Taking all of that into account, I do think if you had John Horst, everybody in the front office, and injected them with truth serum and were able to corner them and get that conversation with them, I do think you would get almost unanimous. Yes, we would absolutely do this trade again because you know, patience is the big word we've preached throughout this season. And that's what it's going to take some more of as we get into this second half schedule, the final third of the season to see Damian Lillard get going and to see this offense really start to uh, to click. But you can't really judge us until we see this offense in the postseason because that's what this uh, deal was made for. I, I mentioned the numbers for Damian Lillard and Drew Holiday and a couple of things that stand out. Uh, we will get into that conversation coming up next because there's some interesting things. We saw one game up close with uh, Drew Holiday. We played Drew Holiday twice with the Celtics, but you saw that one game or half, I should say, in Milwaukee. A couple of things. We talked about it after the game at the time, but some more things that stand out about Drew Holiday's production. Would that carry over if he was on the Bucks this season? And vice versa for Damian Lillard as well. We will get into those conversations Coming up next on Locked on Bucks. Well, time to talk to you now about prize picks. They are the easiest and America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. Easy and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. All you have to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It is demon time on prize picks, and you can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts, and you can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Uh, players and stat types that you can choose from a number of them. You can combine sports as well. If you wanted to look at teams, sports, you name it, you can uh, lump in National Hockey League and the NBA with goals scored and three-pointers made. You can go all NBA, Steph Curry threes and Damian Lillard threes and hedge those together. There are a number of options and fun ways you can engage with prize picks. Just go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That website again is prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and the code locked on NBA. Use that code for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It is simply that easy. And we'll remind you as well, Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's now also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Lockdown Sports Today, here for you 24-7, covering the top stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Lockdown Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, Camille, taking a look at these numbers here. Uh, Damian Lillard, we spent a little bit of time on yesterday's show talking about what we'd seen from Dame. You mentioned the number of threes that he hit this weekend in the three-point shootout and the All-Star game. It's a third of the three-pointers that he has hit for the season as a whole. So, again, you hope that's what gets uh, Damian Lillard really going here. Only played 58 games a season ago. He's been very durable this season, and that's one of the bigger positives is, you know, you did wonder with the age, he and Drew Holiday the same age, but for Dame especially, 58 games played last year, only 29 the season before that, played in 67 in that 72-game season, and 66 when I believe the Blazers played around the same amount of games in the COVID-shortened year. Um, so, so the durability wasn't really a question until the last two years. A core injury was a big part of it. But still, given his age, given those previous two years, you had to carry that question of, I wonder how many games you're going to have Damian Lillard out there. Is it going to take him some time to get going? 
The good news is he has been durable and knock on wood that that doesn't change in these final nearly 30 games. It's been very streaky. And I think uh, most any Blazers fan would tell you not only the slow start to open the year, but he can be incredibly streaky. And I think the challenge for the Bucks is in Portland. It was easy to feed Damian Lillard when he was uh, the hot hand. And here in Milwaukee, you have this guy named Giannis and you have Chris Middleton and even Brooke Lopez, not to say they are on the same level of score as Damian Lillard, but there are simply more mouths to feed. And I think that's been one of the challenges for Dame to get acclimated. Absolutely. He's mentioned that himself about like, what is it like coming to Milwaukee pros and cons of playing with Giannis? And the only con that he mentioned that I heard, and he didn't even want to say it was a con. He said, it's more of the challenge. It's when you have two alpha guys who are used to having the ball in their hands. They are both used to being the guy you put them together and there's going to be a level of sacrifice that's required. Now, with that being said, uh, we have seen, as I mentioned, Giannis is having career numbers so far this year. It's a lot easier, I think, for Giannis to be able to adjust uh, to this role because he is able to sell the ball in his hand. He's screener, roller. He's able to still do Giannis things. But Dame, as you mentioned, uh, this might be the most talent uh, that he has played around on, on the team. And I don't want to disrespect any of those older Portland teams. I'll, I'll do it for you. I think it all is. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's different. It's different when you're sharing the court with a Giannis rather than a LaMarcus Aldridge. It's different when you're out there next to Chris Middleton at this point as well, when he's a third option, um, if you put it into a pecking order. So Dame's adjusting to that. And in addition, I know people don't want to hear about the off the court things that are going on in his life and how difficult of an adjustment it has been for him going from Portland to Milwaukee, where in Portland he had a whole, his whole support system, his whole family moved out there pretty much who lived nearby him, his mom, his kids cousins, close family members, uh, to leave that and to come here to Milwaukee, start fresh, learn a new system. And then on top of that, you've now gone through two coaches uh, in the same system in the same year. So you're trying to adjust to that. I actually just finished watching the Giannis uh, Prime documentary that he just put out today. Same story that we've heard a lot of times, but told by him and his family. And Giannis pointed to the Knicks game when his parents and his brothers finally came back, uh, came to the USA for the first time and they first saw him play. And he was like, I had a career game that day because I was finally happy. Like I was really happy and I was able to really focus on the game and really play. And hearing him say that then and thinking about like what Dame is going through. Now, of course, very different situations, but both of these guys are family guys. Um, so Dame has been honest and vulnerable and open about the fact like, hey, this has been a big adjustment for me. Uh, and I'm, I'm struggling a little bit trying to figure it out, but I'm going to get to it. And that's what I think about a lot with Dame. And it's like it's an adjustment for him coming into this situation, but we know the talent that he has. Uh, and that's why you bring him here. You mentioned like the, the ability to create his own shot and he is the best shot creator, like on this team, he can get to it in three different levels. So I think it's just going to take a little bit more time um, at this point. Like we're getting there. Like you're seeing the seeds of it. You, you hear doc river saying, Hey, I want to unlock Dame in this offense. And while we've seen the offensive numbers take a step back under Dame or under doc so far, I do have faith that they can figure that out and get that back up uh, and continue to build that chemistry between the two of them. Yeah, the the numbers um, for Damian Lillard, when when you look at season by season, we spent some time talking about the shooting percentages, what you saw for the first roughly 30 games of the season when the Bucs were very good, a 24-6 and six record in those games that Dame played in. And his number's much better than what we've seen since January 1st. But that last part that you mentioned – um, you have seen it. It's, it's tough to aggregate all these games and look at the numbers, but in games where Damian Lillard has returned from a layoff, that game that we referenced as well when he came back from some time away where he was back with his family, even right after Portland, um, that's where we've seen the numbers start to grow for Damian Lillard, and that has to do with his mental health and, and his happiness on the basketball court. Um, again, not to say that Damian Lillard's not happy in Milwaukee, and you can right. you can see the signs with his body language, all things considered, it's a, it's a tough year. Everything that Damian Lillard is going through, and I think that's really shown on the court. So again, you brought Damian Lillard in for the postseason. Has he been consistently the impactful player that you envisioned at the time of the trade? I suppose that's a complicated question. If you're basing it just off of his numbers, then no. Um, but as, as you referenced, the efficiency from Giannis and the way that Giannis has played – 
you cannot discount Damian Lillard or Malik Beasley's spacing mm-hmm. for that matter and what they've done to create some room for Giannis. So I, I do think you have to weigh that somewhat in your analysis of what you've seen from Damian Lillard is, look, he's he's helping Giannis eat a lot more and and a lot more healthy for Giannis in, in the way that his efficiency has been there. Now, in the case of Drew Holiday, um, one of the numbers that really snuck up on me for Drew was his three-point shooting. Yeah. That he's up to 44% this season on threes. But what does stand out about those numbers and, and makes it very, very interesting is where Drew Holiday is getting those threes from. And again, this speaks to at the time of the trade, you and, and me and Kane all talked about this, Camille, of, you know, it's it's tough because Boston's a very good fit for Drew Holiday in that you're not going to have to lean on him to be an offensive creator. Uh, that was always going to be the shortcoming of Drew. We saw that in that playoff series I referenced against the Celtics where the Bucks had an 85.8 half-court offensive rating. Drew Holiday was your secondary option. That's not his strength. Not at this point in his career, not at any point in his career. He is a defensive guy that can give you supplemental scoring. And that's what stood out is he has not been a primary option. You've had Jason Tatum, an up and down season, but you still got Jalen Brown. Chris Stapps, Porzingis has been healthy and incredibly impactful. Even Derek White, he's had some ups and downs, but he gives you another guy right around the same level offensively of Drew Holiday. It's minimized the ask. You've seen his shot attempts go down. Uh, by nearly a third per game. He's only getting up about 10 field goal attempts per game this season. Is Drew Holiday 13 points per game that Drew Holiday is averaging here would be uh, the fewest amount he has averaged at 13.1 since his rookie season with the 76ers. And and in terms of anything close, you'd have to go back to the 16-17 season when he averaged 15 Uh, points per game since then he's been very close to 20 points per game annually but I mentioned that 44 percent three-point shooting it's coming from the corners he is taking 44 percent of his threes from the corner where it is much easier to hit where we did not see quite as much from Drew Holiday uh, a season ago with the Bucks and again it has to do with the looks where you're going to have defenses in the Bucks that load up on Giannis and you'll live with some Drew Holiday shots. But in the case of the Celtics, you'll live with Drew Holiday shots. More than that, you'll give Drew Holiday the shots compared to the other guys that are on the floor. And I think that's what's really standing out the most. What I would caution is, you know, as we've experienced in the past, and I, I'm sure as some Bucks fans and non-Bucks fans will point to now and say, well, same is going to apply to Malik Beasley, is it works in the regular season. It's a much different look in the postseason when you're the non-trusted shooter. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that there's a reason that Malik Beasley did not make it into the Lakers playoff rotation last year, and they made a deep run. And you would have thought that surrounding LeBron James and AD uh, with shooting is something that would be beneficial for them in the playoffs, but it just wasn't feasible to get Beasley on the court uh, for them because of the defense, because of the streakiness of the shooting at that time. So it is something to keep an eye on uh, going forward. Excuse me. <clears throat> but um, with thinking about that in the postseason, like what we, the thing with it is that we know the Bucks postseason formula that they did have, it met its expiration date. It felt like, yeah. like this was not going to be sustainable going forward, especially looking at the way that the league has evolved with so much offensive talent. Like you're going to have to keep up. And I think when you're thinking about the math of swapping out Drew with Dame, is you're thinking like, hey. Well, at least behind Dame, we're going to have Giannis and Brooke. We're going to have two like defensive stalwarts behind him to help try to clean that up. And as we've mentioned, under Doc, the Bucks defense has risen up to I believe the twelfth best defense um, in the league over that time period. So, um, you see again, you see it coming into focus of how this can work defensively for this team, and then you think offensively again. It's about the postseason. That's what they're being built for. That's what they're here for. That's why they're paying three coaches, because it's all about getting into the postseason and trying to win a championship. There's a level of urgency here. So you get Dame in there, and now you're looking at the regular season. You're trying to see, like, can you, like, get hot? Like, can we start to see how this can mold and come together by the postseason? Like, this isn't NBA 2K where you make a trade and everything just instantly is good. Like there is the chemistry, there's figuring things out. And again, 
a coaching change. I think that the all-star break came at a really good time for this team. Um, one, being able to get some time to rest, but also having some time off, being able to reflect, getting a chance to come in, have a practice before you get back on the court um, and really get ready and get your mindset ready for the next you know, third of the season that's leading into that playoff push. So like, we're going to have to see how this Milwaukee Bucks current backcourt looks come postseason, um, but we're using the regular season to try to see what trends we can find, see what we can look at and say, hey, if this happens come postseason, they're going to be okay. So this last third of the season is going to be a really uh, good test for them, especially because we know they have the toughest schedule in the Eastern Conference. So they're going to be seeing a high level of competition leading up into the playoffs as well. Uh, a couple other numbers to share about Drew Holiday and uh, Damian Lillard. We will get into that. And uh, again, just try to take a look at the postseason because that's what both of these teams made these moves for. Two of the three teams involved, I should say, in the Bucks and uh, the Celtics. So we'll get into that as we wrap up the show after this on Locked on Bucks. This episode of Locked on Bucks is sponsored by BetterHelp. And uh, look, sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be about thinking about the same thing this week. BetterHelp allows you to identify those topics that allow you to be yourself. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team, and it's important to get those things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It is designed to be flexible and, most importantly, suited to your schedule. All you have to do to get started is visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA and you'll get 10% off your first match. It could not possibly be easier and more beneficial to you. More importantly, again, they tailor things to your schedule. You can find a licensed therapist online within minutes. You can cancel and move on at any moment or find a new therapist as well as BetterHelp has made it all that easy. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. Again, that is betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash locked on NBA. And again, you'll get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp. So as we start to wrap this up here, um, Camille, we mentioned the, the jarring numbers of the 44% three point shooting for Drew Holiday and, and how his efficiency has come from the corners. He's in the 100th percentile in three-point shooting from the corner. 62% on his corner threes. And again, that's one of the most efficient shots in the league. It is the easiest three-point shot in the league. But to be shooting at 62% from the corners is remarkable. Last year, he shot 44% on corner threes with the Bucs. Uh, the year prior to that, 34, 36 prior to that. 41, his final year in New Orleans. He has never had a year where he has shot higher than uh, 45% on corner threes. And this year he's up to 62% from the corners. Uh, so that's the remarkable part that we're seeing from Drew Holiday. Again, you know what to expect defensively. The offense, he's, he's hitting the open shots. You do wonder what it's going to start to look like in the postseason. And the other thing is, I don't think any of us are the the right judge on this. I've seen some Drew Holiday. I, I have not seen nowhere near as much as we did for the last three seasons. I, I, I caution to even say it. It does seem as though, and it happens to all of us, that maybe he's a step behind where he was in seasons past. When you think about the age, he's the same age as Damian Lillard. The amount of playoff games and, and the way that he plays defense, it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it's something that, is sustainable for a long period of time. But again, you do also wonder if it's let's just save this for the postseason. So that's the caution I would throw out there. With Damian Lillard, we've gone over the numbers. We've gone over his streakiness by month. We've gone over the looks that he's created for Giannis. I think the big thing here, and, and we'll get into this much more later on in the week when we talk about big picture for this team, 
But I think we've heard enough from Doc Rivers to get the sense that his big initiative for the second half schedule post All Star game is to get Damian Lillard going in, in a number of venues where he has said things along the lines of, look, I told him, don't worry about fitting in. We need to fit in around you. You need to be more aggressive. What we talked about on yesterday's show, too, with Shaq, having that yeah. message of Dame of, look, you got to own this. It's on you and Giannis to take this home. I do think all these things are going to resonate, and especially with Doc and the way this offense has struggled, the big operative is how do we get Damian Lillard unlocked how do we do that without suffering too much of Giannis's efficiency but you can sense for Doc Rivers it's important that we need the ball in Dame's hands more and we just need Dame to start to be more aggressive the last thing I'll point out you know it's not great but when you look at his shot quality and you look at second spectrum for this it is identical last year versus this year so in other words he's getting the same type of quality looks and what you would anticipate to go in the shots attempted have declined per game. Giannis is a big part of that. Having Chris Middleton is a big part of that. So, you know, when you look at his his frequency of getting to the rim and things like that that we've talked about, I think the big encouraging piece is he has been streaky in shooting the basketball. He always is. But by and large, the quality of shots he's getting are not that different from what he was seeing in Portland when he was facing even more of the attention. So. Once he starts to find his hot zone, I think that bodes well for a bigger turnaround in the post-All-Star break schedule. And that's the hope. Because, I mean, you look at Dame, again, 37% three-point shooter during this time in Portland, during his career so far leading up to this year here in Milwaukee. He's shooting on the season about 34% from three. So a little bit lower than what you've seen in Portland. But the thing at watching as a Bucks fan, like we broke down the month-by-month splits, like – you combine October, November. I know folks listening yesterday's show have heard these numbers, but maybe there are some new people here just to bring you guys up to speed. Uh, here in Milwaukee with Dame, October, November, that was 17 games. He shot 32.9% from three on 8.6 attempts. The month of December, the Bucks went 11-2 uh, and two, uh, with Dame, I believe it is, over those 13 games. He shot 43.1% on 8.9 attempts. He was shooting the ball really well from three in December. Here comes 2024 in January. He was shooting 27.8% on 8.4 attempts. So far in the month of February, 32.6% on 7.7 .7 attempts. So when you're looking at all of that, you're like, wow, it's been up and down in that sense. Like you haven't seen the steady or increase in the numbers. You haven't seen, um, you know, just a consistent like, hey, he's getting you 35% from three game in and game out. You're seeing some games where he's efficient, some games where it's not falling for him. But you want to see him keep shooting it. What you want is for him to get comfortable in the system. And you mentioned the shot profile, and that's really encouraging to hear that he's getting some of the same looks. And we've heard him mention that he's still uncomfortable a bit. Um, so you want him to find that comfort level because, again, NBA basketball, you're shooting like you can shoot the same put the ball at the same time and it might go in, it might not. You can look at shot doctors, you can try to figure out the science behind what you were doing with your hand this time and why it didn't go. But um, comfort is a piece of that. Like you have to be clear in knowing your role, what you're doing. And it seems like more clarity uh, is coming Dame's way around that as well. So I'm hoping that the all-star break here with him winning the three-point contest, with him being the MVP of the All-Star game, hearing the boos from the indie crowd, uh, soaking all that in, which, by the way, I love the fact that they booed him um, there. I love that little rivalry feeling between the Bucks and the Pacers and their fans, so I was here for that. But you're, you're hoping that all of that and him understanding, like, hey, I heard you know, in history that – uh, the last time a Bucks player won the All-Star MVP, that was Giannis. They went on to win a championship. I'm hoping we can repeat history. Like, he's here. He understands what he's here for. He wants it. Um, and we've heard this team talk about wanting it. And now they have to show it because under Griff and under Doc, we have seen some games where the effort doesn't look like they really want it. But now it's like, hey, it's crunch time. Like, you have all been talking about wanting to get to this moment. This is the playoff push. Now we're getting here. The games are getting realer. The competition is amp ramp ramping up. What are you going to do with it? And Damian Lillard is one of those types of guys that when the pressure continues to go up, he enjoys to perform. So I'm hoping that all of that, but we talked about him getting more comfortable, looking at the shot profile that he's taking, looking at how he's been playing with Giannis, that they continue to grow um, and they round into form in the next month or so as the playoffs are getting ready to start. 
Yeah, and um, a, a couple things to note before we do sign off here in in, in reasons for optimism. Um, his effective field goal percentage for Dame has gone down by about six points, and that, again, has to do with the three-point percentage that is, has dipped and has been very inconsistent up and down so far this season. But where you would have encouraging uh, feelings coming from this, and especially as we make that comparison of, well, how, how is he going to age versus how Drew Holiday is going to age here? So Drew Holiday is shooting 62% at the rim this season. Not bad. Damian Lillard, um, for that matter, is shooting 61% at the rim. The big difference is Drew was a 69% shooter at the rim um, last season with the Bucs. And really, when you look at where his shots were coming from, it was in the mid-60s for most of his career, his size. I know he's only technically an inch larger than uh, Dame is, but he has that physicality. So he gets two-thirds or more of his shots near the rim. Um or, or shoots at uh, 60 plus percent there, but it's dri it's dipped pretty dramatically this season for uh, Drew Holiday for Dame, the percentage pretty much on par, relatively flat to where it was a season ago. But we're also seeing Drew's attempts at the rim slowly declining in the mid range as well. Whereas Damian Lillard, so far this season, has remained pretty constant in terms of the amount of field goal attempts he's taken at the rim. I think the big thing would be, look, we got to get those threes to come up. And, and to your point, that's taking those open looks and that's being more aggressive. Doc Rivers made that point as well. Of, I don't want you to pass up a good luck to get your teammates involved. I understand <laughs> getting the ball movement here. That's going to be important. But when you get a good look, you need to take it because that's the best look that we're going to get. And I think that numbers, the numbers bear that out. He's, he's taken less threes so far this season. About 45% of his attempts have been threes. Last few years, it was 50%. Um, and same with mid-range. Those have started to creep up as well. So just getting him those three-point looks is going to be the big thing for this team um, moving forward. But the consensus for us is, uh, yes, I would still do the trade. Camille, you would still do the trade. I think yeah. that's where most of us are as well. And, and look, you just got to wait to see this in the postseason. But again, it, it has to do with those numbers we gave you at the top of the show <laughs> Where the half court offense rated for the Bucks, ranked for the Bucks in those five postseason trips, average of 10th out of 16 teams, not good enough. So you had an elite defense, you had a so so offense. And to your point of you just got to do something different. It's like when you have that that band, that group, that artist out there that just puts out the same album time after time after time when it's, yeah, this is good, but man, this, this feels like the same thing we did two albums ago, and that was the Bucks' recognition of, let's try something different. Let's try a new sound. Maybe it doesn't work, but we got to try it. We can't just keep doing the, uh, the same old, same old. Uh, coming up on tomorrow's show, we're going to take a closer look at Doc Rivers, the numbers that we've seen since this coaching change. What's real? What do we expect to drop off? What do we expect to take a step forward? And again, that tough, tough schedule for the Bucks. The, uh, the rest of the way. And I do believe we're still working on finalizing it, but we will have a very, very special guest joining us later this week on the show. Uh, for Camille, I am Justin. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow with more Locked on Bucks.